What is up there everybody, Citrus Aviation here for yet another video and today is the continuing of my highly anticipated ramp series. So we are going to be talking about more about being a ramp agent and in today's part 2 video we are going to talk about how to get hired as a Delta Airlines ramp agent. Now we're going to get started with a job posting here that is posted by the company that I work for Unify. And this is a position, a part-time or full-time, ramp agent slant driver, $12 an hour plus flight privileges, Delta. And this is in Cleveland, Ohio. I am using this job listing because it is really well written and um, it's uh, a good description of what you can expect to do. Now, you can get paid anywhere between $9 to $15 for walking on the ramp for Unify. I've seen as little as $9 and as much as $15 depending on where you're walking at. At my local station they are hiring for $14 an hour. The station that we are using for example which is Cleveland CLE is offering $12 an hour. So that is the rate they're offering. Obviously when you apply check to see what the rate is they should say somewhere on the job listing. But yeah, we're going to take a look here. I'm going to go through everything that they have here on the job listing. And then I'm going to say how true it is. And um, most of this is actually really well written and pretty accurate. So this will give you an idea of just of me going through this job listing and give you some more details. This will tell you what kind of things a ramp agent is going to need to have. The skills you're going to need to have. What a company who might be hiring you is looking for. So let's get started here. Our description, load, unload, service, guide, and direct customer aircraft, that is very accurate. Safeguard customer's luggage, air cargo, air mail for weather, loss, theft, damage, and or destruction. Yeah, yes, that is pretty accurate. Um, taking good care of the bags that we get on our flight is pretty important. Um, particularly if we're transporting um, organs, HR, which is human remains or if we're transporting live animals we take special care with those items in particular lift load unload sort and transfer passenger baggage aml freight and company materials in and out of aircraft bins belt loader and baggage cards in a safe manner yes this is very accurate um, not doing it safely will cause personal injury so that's definitely one of the things you're going to learn is you need to do it safely there are some ways that we do it uh, in order to prevent ourselves getting hot because you can lift easily you could be lifting let's say 300 bags a sift so you obviously need to know how to do that in a safe manner next it says receive and record customer baggage air freight mail and company materials as requested this is not something you're going to do super often uh, that is usually for the AIC or ALA that usually requires extra training uh, if you're just getting hired on you're not going to do this for your first few months but this is something you'll do. Uh, I'm currently taking AIC training right now, uh, which means those people are definitely in charge of aircraft loads. But even when you get started, if you're, say, loading a bin, the a ALA or the AIC might come up to you and ask you, hey, uh, how many bags you got in there? So you do have to keep count of the bags when you're stacking. Uh, pick up, deliver, and transport cargo and baggage to and from aircraft and prepared records in connection with these responsibilities. Uh, yes, this is pretty accurate. Um, obviously, what you're going to do is depend based on the airport that you walk at. Uh, if you walk at a larger airport, you, you will have much more specified responsibility. For example, in Atlanta, you might be your whole shift might be just being a local arrivals driver. We're just taking um, local bags. You're, unlo you're helping to unload them and then you just drive them over to baggage claim, drop them off and you do it again. Uh, but at a small airport like say Cleveland here or my local station, you will uh, pick up, you will do deliveries and you'll do transportation of cargo and baggage. Now we don't do cargo as much because Swissport does most of our cargo, but sometimes we will have cargo that goes to the baggage claim, but that's not super common at my airport. Operate and or drive motorized equipment such as belt loaders, air start units, lift trucks, pushback, tugs, bag cards, lavatory cards, and DI saws, or manually push and pull carts and containers. This is very accurate. You will do this every single day. You will do this multiple times a flight. You will be operating this equipment very regularly. So if you are not comfortable driving 
uh, industrial vehicles, you probably should not apply for this job. Some of these vehicles can be very dangerous to operate if you're not careful. So it's something very important. Uh, for example, I might drive 20 times a shift. Uh, you're going to be driving quite a, quite a bit. Let's say when an airplane comes in, I might drive up the belt loader uh, to the aircraft. Uh, to unload one of the bins and then I might drive the bag cars to drop the bags off and then I might drive up the pushback tug to hook the tow bar to the aircraft and things like that that's just right there that's operating the vehicles three times uh, a, f a flight that's probably about what I do about three times per flight and then if I walk six flights that's uh, three times nine it's 18 times a shift so you'll drive it quite a bit and then obviously uh, I often will end up doing labs as well. So you'll drive the lav car and you'll push the lav car into place. So, and uh, this equipment weighs quite a bit as well. So complete paperwork and forms connected with work assignments pertaining to procedures and enter into company's information system as required. Yes, you will do this quite a bit. Uh, uh, well, there are a lot of logs, particularly lav logs, uh, de-icing logs, things like that that you'll have to fill out. Usually a supervisor will enter this information in. However, depending on what your station, you know, work culture and uh, what they do, they might actually ask you to do this information entering yourself. But at my station, a supervisor usually enters this information in. Uh, usually we'll have someone who does operations who enters that in, which makes it easier on the soups as well. Perform other related duties as assigned within the appropriate skills and experience capabilities expected for this position. That's correct. Maybe they might ask you to do something random, but um, won't ask you to do something unless you're qualified. And if they do ask you to do something that you're not qualified to do, just tell them you're not qualified. I don't feel comfortable doing this. Um, saying things like that will save a lot of incidents. Uh, basic qualifications, prerequisites, must be a local in-state resident. Yes, uh, valid in-state driver's license, very important because you're driving equipment quite a bit. Ability to pass a pre-employment drug screen, that's important. They don't want any people who have certain issues with drugs being working for them because uh, this is a very important job and safety is a big deal. Ability to, to pass up to a 10-year background check. Again, they don't want any criminals walking at this job. Uh, it's a very secure environment and they only want some people walking for them. Must be at least 18 years of age. Uh, this actually will depend on your airport. Um, it's anywhere between 18 to 21, depending on the airport. Um, and if you're below that age, you need to have a, um, a parent's approval slip. And I think even if you're at some airports, even if you're above 18, you still need a parent or guardian to approve you to walk for them. Must have authorization to walk in the United States as defined by Immigration Reform Act of 1986. This is pretty normal for any job listing here in the United States. A must complete ramp and CETA training to obtain airport authority identification security. This is also really important. Um, you're going to need to have the airport uh, issue you a CETA badge, which will allow you to get access into the portions of the airport that you need access to to do your job. If you can't get it, uh, then you're not going to be able to get the job. Experience. No prior experience necessary. Must be open-minded and ready to walk as part of a detail-oriented team. This is accurate. Technically, no prior experience needed, but generally, if you've never had a job before, they are not going to hire you. So at least some previous experience is necessary. You have to have a, at least walked somewhere before and so an ability to do a good job and to be able to walk quickly and be very skilled and detailed with the kind of work that you do because details are important with this job. Uh, knowledge, skills, and ability. Excellent customer service skills. Yes, I would say so if you're doing more like gate agent stuff. Um, obviously, customer service is important as a ramp agent too, but you're not really interacting with customers a whole lot. Strong walk ethic. Yes, please. I, I hate lazy people at walk. If you are lazy, uh, generally you'll get chewed out and you'll essentially... Um, you'll get frowned upon. Uh, I know people who have essentially left because um, they were lazy and, you know, eventually people made fun of them or whatnot. But the whole point is uh, be a strong walker and you'll fit in well with the team. If you don't walk hard every single day, you're going to have problems. Uh, someone's going to complain about it. Ability to walk in a team-oriented environment. This is really important. If you like doing things by yourself and just making all of your own decisions, this might be a problem because 
every person has a responsibility they have to be able to do, but you have to be able to do it in coordination with other people who are doing their responsibilities. So if you're, let's say, five people walking in a plane, there might be five different responsibilities they need to do at one time. And so you need to be able to walk together as a team, see what's needed, and be able to be flexible around that. Uh, preferred qualifications, education, um, high school. Um, high school diploma, this is generally preferred, but this mostly mostly because they require an age limit. Uh, like you have to be at least 18 years of age. I mean, most people are 18 or older have a high school diploma. Uh, one plus year of relevant experience. This is the whole thing I got back to. Uh, you really should at least have worked at a job before before applying to be a ramp agent. So definitely have worked like a restaurant job or something like that before you apply here. Knowledge, skills, and abilities. Ability to communicate information and instructions verbally and or via radio equipment. Very important. And ability to communicate effectively in a professional manner. Both of these are super important uh, because you need to be able to speak clearly in your verbal communications because it could be very loud out there. You might have to yell something. You will need to talk over a radio in many cases. Uh, very important. Of course, being professional is really important because there are people watching you all, at all times. You're essentially in a fistball because hundreds of people could be watching you at any point uh, from the airport terminal windows, from vehicles driving around just from the area people would be watching what you're doing and so yeah uh, being safe for what you do and being professional is really important um walk schedule you will need to have flexibility to walk in a variety of shifts including the nights weekends holidays and overtime we operate in a shift bid environment now this part here is not accurate depending on the station um so at this station here, at Cleveland, it appears they do a shift bid environment. So that is that you will bid for a shift. So you only get shifts depending on the bids and your uh, the time in which you got hired will be based on your seniority. So seniority matters because the most senior people get to choose the shifts they want first versus people who are not as senior. So if you're getting hired at an airport that does a shift bid environment, you're going to get the worst uh, you're going to get the lost sift. That's just how it works. Now, at my station, we do not do sift bids. You just get hired for a very specific sift. So, um, the station manager, when he hires you or when he interviews you, he'll offer you sifts that are available. And you just accept that. And then, um, once you've hired, maybe you walk there for a while, you can just ask the station manager or, well, with us, we use the station manager. We just ask him. Uh, if we want a shift change. Uh, so at my station, getting a shift change is a lot easier than it appears to be here at Cleveland, but uh, different stations do it different ways. Walk environment must be able to be a lot of moving vehicles or aircraft and use radio equipment. Yes, very important. Uh, enjoy the outdoors on a daily basis. Sun, rain, sleet, and snow may be exposed to a wide variety of weather conditions, jet and mechanical noises. Fumes, dirt, and dust for extended periods. Um, this is very accurate. It's not May. It uh, You will be expected to a wide range of weather conditions. It's guaranteed you're going to have um, all of these occur uh, when you walk at the airport. Except if you walk in like out of Mexico or something like that where it never snows. But you're going to get everything happen. You're going to get every weather condition. And you're going to be very familiar with the weather. It just is the reality. Um, you're going to have good days, bad days. It is what it is. Uh, physical demand slight requirements, but must be able to lift, carry, push, pull, and move items of 70 pounds or more on a regular basis and required to lift and repeatedly lift items of 40 or 50 pounds on raised surfaces. Yes, this is something we do all the time. Again, probably the average bag weight that I lift is about, say, 35 pounds, and I'll easily lift 200 of those a day. So just be prepared for that. Um, if you are not physically capable to do that, don't bother to apply for the job. I'm just telling you that right now. Must be able to walk, climb, bend, kneel, crawl, and stoop on a frequent basis and for extended periods. This is very accurate. Uh, again, you need to have some physical abilities before you apply if you are not physically capable of doing intensive lifting exercises. Basically, if you're not capable of possibly being on a football team, 
you probably shouldn't be doing this. Uh, it's basically the equivalent of being a competitive athlete, except you're walking and being paid in a regular walk environment. Must be able to walk in cramped or high places. That is also correct. Bins are usually very cramped, small, low to the ground, and they are often very high off the ground. Must be able to carry heavy items up and down jetway stairs. That is correct as well. Um, usually we just use a slide, but I know some places maybe don't have slides on their jet bridges. Supervisory responsibilities, none. Technically not true. Um, particularly if they think that you're doing a good job, they will give you um, leadership responsibilities when the leadership staff feels you're ready. Um, so this is a really good job posting that really says everything you're going to need to know. So, you know, be prepared for it to be a very physical job in all kinds of weather conditions and uh, your shifts might be weird depending on uh, if you have a shift bid system or not. At my station, we don't. So we just get hired for the shifts that we get hired. Unfortunately, I can change my shifts that I want fairly easily. So I really do appreciate that my station does that. But the physical job, it's a job we need to be constantly alert, constantly awake, paying attention, being able to do physical abilities and once you can do that, you will be ready for the job. So don't be necessarily intimidated by this job application because it might look really intimidating, right? The job posting might seem intimidating, but as long as you can, you know, uh, be able to uh, walk well with other people, we'll say six other people all at once doing the same thing, and you can be able to lift items and you have the physical abilities needed for the job, and particularly if you're an aviation enthusiast, then this job will be really well suited for you, particularly if you're looking for it to be your first aviation job. So that is pretty much it for the job listing. Once you make your application, you will then be contacted by an HR representative, which might be a station manager. It might be someone who is just walks on at the office on documents and is essentially an admin for the station you'll get interviewed by one of those people and then usually it's two interviews they'll do a first interview with you and then if they you know liked your interview and they thought you'd be good for a job they'll give you a second interview and usually at that point you'll be offered the job uh, once you finish that interview there is still a process to go because you haven't been hired yet a lot of people with most normal jobs you finish the second interview they give you the job offer if you accept the job offer, that's pretty much it. You can then start your job fairly soon. But because you're working at an international airport, you have extra things you need to do. You need to do the d drug screening. You need to go through background checks. And it takes quite a while, about two hours, just to fill out all the paperwork for the background check. And so you have uh, memorized things like the last places you've lived in the last five years. You need some contacts. You need... Um, some proofs of identification more than normal. You need like, I believe it's two proofs of identification. You need proof of citizenship. You need all sorts of proofs of some things. So just be prepared for that. And then it will take a couple weeks for the background check to go through. Uh, for me, the background check for the airline passed really quickly. I was able to get my Delta uh, security done within, I think it was two weeks. They accepted it. And then the airport took a while. It took about a month to get that through. And then after that was done, uh, you go and do your badge training. You get your badge, they do your pictures, all that sort of thing. And then once that is done, you are then ready to begin your training. And that is what the next video will be about. We will talk about training and the sort of things that you will do during your training period. And the thing is, the training period for being a ramp agent is a lot longer than you think. It's approximately one month, a little bit over a month, about a month and a half for your official training. And then beyond that, you are constantly still training. In fact, I'm still training right now, even though I've been working at this job for five months. Because there are constantly new things to learn. And there are new positions that you can start doing. Just constantly new things to learn. I know that people are still training to this day for things that they want to be qualified for even though they've been working at the company for say five years or more. So there's constantly training that you can do. It's a lot like if you walk as a firefighter or a paramedic, there are constantly new things you can learn and be trained and qualified on. So we're gonna talk about that in the next video in this series. 
as being a rap agent. So I'm really excited to share that with you and I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and God bless you.